Right now on Denver 7 at 7 o'clock on Local 3, it is official. The Broncos are off the market this morning, bought by Rob Walton of the Walmart family. The next steps with the league before the historic offer goes through. Survivors of the Uvalde school shooting are set to testify before Congress today. We're going 360 in depth on guns in America, continuing our coverage uh, from new ordinances here in the metro to the latest debate on Capitol Hill. And winning the big lottery jackpot is a dream come true for a lot of people, but a new survey finds that we, we may want to keep that multi-million dollar windfall a secret from even those closest <laughs> to us, which uh, I guess you have to be a master of disguise in order to pull off. Yeah. That's I, how you do that. I wouldn't tell the kids. Yeah. I, I want them to live normal lives. World's yeah. best pro poker face. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady, meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo. Uh, looks like we have a pretty lucky forecast today. Lisa. We do. Yeah, yeah, it might give it away when you roll up in that Lamborghini, Nicole. Yeah. Right, yeah. They, this old thing. They, I, I, oh. Yeah, they don't know what things cost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's normal. Uh, mid to upper 50s right now from the airport to downtown. You can see a beautiful start to our day. And yeah, some pretty nice weather. Yesterday, we picked up a few thunderstorms. It got a little bumpy, some severe weather out on the eastern plains. and. Even 11 reported tornadoes yesterday. A lot of those land spouts, no reports of any damage, but most of those reports here across our plains. We're going to be in the low 70s here by noon. We'll be in the upper 70s near 80 between about 3 and 5 o'clock. So it's going to be a drier, calmer day today. Fewer storms, highs right around normal at that 80 degree mark, and more low 70s for the mountains and foothills. So pretty mild this afternoon. When you look at our risk of any severe weather today, there's just a marginal risk, and it just clips portions of southern Colorado. We are going to see more storms pop up tomorrow, and I'll have that Thursday forecast coming up. And right now we have a couple of uh, trouble spots, but uh, the earlier ones are what really has set us off in a bad way right now. I want to start with this crash that's still being cleaned up here between 124th and 120th on southbound Highway 85. So it's still a little bit uh, slow in there for you. Probably at this point not worth an alternate route. It's just going to cost you a couple extra minutes. The big delay into downtown Denver. You see all this red in here from the camera there back by I-76, 58th. You can see how tight that stop and go traffic is. We had a crash right after I-70. All lanes are open, but this is the residual effect of it. And you can also see on the travel time about 20 minutes on I-76. So it's busy in a lot of these areas where we've had earlier problems, but they are getting cleared up, which is helping us out, especially the south side of town where it's been pretty quiet for us here this morning. Santa Fe, C-476 Avenue, I-70 to the west. That all looks pretty good for us. Taking a live look at Empower Field at Mile High Stadium, which has a billion dollar <laughs> glow about it this morning. It is official. The Broncos have a new owner. Oh, an over $4 billion That's glow, right. I think, right? Rob Walton of the Walmart family leads the ownership group. He had been considered the front runner for several weeks. Denver 7's Veronica Costa is outside the stadium. And Veronica, mm. a lot of changes coming to the team. This was definitely the big one. Lots of changes. We have a coach. We have that star quarterback and now a brand new owner. You said it earlier. It is the trifecta for the Denver Broncos and it's a big change for the team. The last time they had new ownership was in 1984. We're talking about 38 years ago. That's when Pat Boland bought the team. Now the team is currently under the care of the Broncos trust. That trust entered into an agreement to sell to the Walton Penner Group. It's been several weeks since we heard Rob Walton was really a front runner and serious about buying the beloved team. His group did win the second round of bidding that happened on Monday afternoon. The price tag, you guys, it, it was not a small one, more than $4.6 billion. That's what it took to buy this team, according to a Denver 7 source. Now, this means Walton is the richest owner in NFL history. The Broncos did post a statement on behalf of Walton regarding the sale via Twitter last night. That said, in part, quote, we look forward to earning the confidence and support of the NFL as we take the next steps in this process. When the necessary approval procedures are met, our family is excited to share more with the Broncos fans, the organization, as well as the community. Now, the Walton Penner Group, it does have a brand new member, Melody Hobson. She's a prominent black businesswoman who also owns an investment firm. And if you remember, the NFL was really serious. It was really important to them to have some sort of diversity as part of the Broncos ownership. And now they have at least a little bit of that. We're in Denver this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta.
September 7th. Thank you, Veronica. This morning, we're also taking a closer look at how this $4.6 billion deal stacks up to other sports team sales. The previous record was for $3.3 billion. That was for the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, that deal also involved some real estate. The Carolina Panthers were purchased for nearly $2.3 billion in 2018. So it is a record by far for a U.S. sports franchise. Right now on the DenverChannel.com, you can read our Broncos insider Troy Rank's full analysis of the Broncos sale. From Colorado to our nation's capital, gun violence is still a top priority for lawmakers. This morning, we're continuing our 360 in-depth coverage of guns in America. Local leaders in several metro communities are moving forward on strict new laws. Also, corporations in America staying largely silent in response to the latest tragedies. And today, Capitol Hill lawmakers will hear testimony from survivors of the Uvalde school shooting as senators try to reach some kind of compromise. So we have team coverage this morning, starting with Denver 7's Christian Lopez, who joined us because Boulder City Council passed several measures on gun control mm. more than a year now after the King Super shooting. Yeah, City Council unanimously passed these ordinances last night, and here are some of the measures. The most notable one is a ban on both the sale and possession of assault weapons, also raising the age to buy a gun to 21, banning ghost guns, and establishing a 10-day waiting period to purchase a gun while waiting for a background check to be done. Before that vote last night, city leaders heard hours of public comment, many people sharing how much of an impact the Boulder King Super shooting had on them. Before the King Super shooting, I did not realize just how devastating gun violence would be for a community as a whole. As an educator and parent, I want to ensure that we are doing all we can to prevent all gun violence. Prohibiting firearms in sensitive places fosters safer spaces and also recognizes the continued trauma that survivors of gun violence deal with when repeatedly exposed to the open carry of firearms. But not everyone was in favor of that decision. Some people who were against it argued that this would divide the community and make Boulder less safe. It will be a big mistake to start restricting legal citizens' rights to defend themselves. Far more lives are saved each year by guns than taken by guns. Everything you, everything you guys are voting on tonight is just virtue signaling. In case you guys forgot, criminals don't obey laws. And during the meeting, Congressman Joe Nagus also sent in a video where he shared his support for the passage of these proposals. Live this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Thank you, Christian. Three other communities all in Boulder County also worked on gun related legislation last night. Superior's Board of Trustees passed some of the strictest new rules uh, and that uh, will limit who can even possess a firearm. Also, assault weapons can no longer be bought, sold or transferred in Superior. And anyone who already owns an assault weapon has until the end of the year to pass a background check. Six gun ordinance passed a second reading in Louisville. Those measures include a ban on assault weapons, raising the gun purchasing age to 21 and outlawing open and concealed carry in places like hospitals, schools and churches. And in Lafayette City Council passed a first reading for ordinances prohibiting open carry in public places and on city property. Also a requirement for gun dealers to post signs at locations warning of the dangers of guns. These bills will need a second reading still. The recent mass shootings from Buffalo, New York to Uvalde, Texas have prompted more people to speak out about gun violence, but not many CEOs. Several leaders of America's top corporations have stayed silent about the tragedies and the push for gun safety. ABC News contacted the top 20 companies from the Fortune 500 list for comment on the recent mass shootings and their stance on gun control. Almost none of the companies responded, though, except for Microsoft and Walgreens and those companies ended up declining to comment. Experts say many are keeping quiet over fears of backlash. Today, survivors of the Uvalde school shooting will testify before a House committee on gun violence. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford joins us because one of the youngest to testify is 11 years old. She was in the mm. classroom and has a horrific story to tell. 
A powerful one too, and we are going to be hearing live from her. She faked her own death just to stay alive during the Uvalde shooting. This hearing comes as lawmakers are rushing to finalize a bipartisan agreement on gun reform. Nine witnesses will testify before the House Oversight and Reform Committee today about the mass shootings not only in Uvalde but also in Buffalo. Victims, parents, a pediatrician, and gun safety advocates are going to be sharing their stories and opinions. The president of a teacher. Union and the Buffalo Police Commissioner also expected to participate. A package of gun control legislation is expected to pass the House this week, but it is likely to stall in the Senate. Actor Matthew McConaughey spoke at the White House Tuesday urging more action on gun control. We need responsible gun ownership, responsible gun ownership. We need background checks. We need to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 rifle. To 21. A group of bipartisan senators is aiming to have a proposal on gun reform ready by the end of the week. Thank you, Jessica. ABC News will have that special report for the House Committee hearing on gun violence today, which you can watch over on Denver 7 at 8 a.m. Well, it's not your typical job fair. How about some food and drinks while you hand out resumes? We'll tell you where that's happening. And if you're packing up to move this summer, we have some advice before you hire the wrong movers.